Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book view. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Iron Queen by Julie Kagawa, and this is book three in the Iron Fae series. So, since this is the third in a series, I can't really say much while going into spoilers, so uh, if you have not read this book yet, I suggest you click away now and come back later. So we pick up pretty quickly after we end the last book. Megan and Ash have been exiled, and they're returning to Louisiana, where Megan lives, to basically start a life there together. Unfortunately, the Iron King isn't going to let her be that easily. The False King has sent, like, some of his Iron Fae there to catch her and bring her to him. Thankfully, Ash manages to kill them off. Megan tried to use Glamour to fight against them, but for some reason it made her sick to her stomach. So, throughout this book, Megan is unable to use her Glamour, because she finds out she is able to use Iron Glamour in the last book. Now, for some reason, whenever she uses either Glamour, Summer, or Iron, she just gets super sick and nauseous, or passes out, or super, gets super weak. And we find out that's because, before, her Summer Glamour was sealed away. So... The two glamours were not interacting with each other. Now that her glamour is not sealed, the two glamours are just kind of like fighting inside her and they aren't cooperating well, so it's not good for her. She can't use any of their glamour now. So Ash and Megan are return returned to Lita Slith because we find out that she has Megan's father or the man she thought was her father for the first six years of her life. They manage to make a deal with her to get him back, and Puck manages to meet up with them, and we find out that he had gotten himself exiled too because he went after Megan. As we find out in the last book that he has romantic feelings for her, though she does not return them, and he's not too happy to realize that he just got himself exiled for nothing. So he's bitter for a while and kind of rude and I do feel sorry for Puck but grow up dude grow up you know I can see things from his point of view Megan did if Megan was unsure about how she felt she shouldn't really have taken advantage of Puck by kissing him and just mm, I don't know how to go on that he doesn't sulk about it for too long or at least he doesn't let on to sulking which, you know, I appreciate. He didn't let it, like, affect everything throughout the whole book. So he's trying to help Megan get used to using her glamour without basically getting sick to her stomach. And that's not really going too well. Ash is trying to teach Megan how to fight. Megan actually suggested Ash teach how to fight so that he isn't always having to worry about defending her. Which I like how he actually went along with this. You know, he doesn't want Megan to put herself in danger, and he'd rather be the one fighting for her. But he actually understands that there are going to be situations where he can't always be there to defend her, and therefore she should know how to defend herself. So he gets her an iron sword and is teaching her how to use it the best that he can. Because he's had a long time to, you know, master his swordsmanship. And she has very little time. So he's trying to give her a very condensed crash course. You know, while they're in the middle of all this training, the Summer Court actually sends someone to find Megan to offer her a deal. That the three of their exiles will be lifted if she goes to try and take care of the Iron King. Because they're trying to fight the Iron Army and things aren't going too well. The Iron Army kind of has all the advantages. There's much more of them and just things aren't going good for summer and winter. So they gotta be pretty desperate to be willing to make this deal with her. And Megan doesn't want to be used as their like personal assassin because she's the only one who can go into the Iron Kingdom without, you know, being killed by barely breathing. So she doesn't want to be their personal assassin really, but it, she knows how much Puck and Ash want to be able to return to Fairy. And if they don't get their exiles lifted, they will eventually fade away from existence in the human world. And she doesn't want that for them. So she's willing to do this for them. So she goes and makes sure that Oberon and Mab will hold up their end of the bargain. 
And Megan has gotten extremely confident in herself compared to the first book. She actually speaks up against Titania and demands that no harm will be done to her family at all. And, you know, Oberon goes along with this and basically says that her family will be safe from either court. And, you know, that the exile of Ash and Puck and her will be lifted if she succeeds. And, of course, Ash and Puck are definitely going to be going into the Iron Realm with her. They're not going to let her do this on her own. So, Mav has actually found a way to make these little amulets against iron sickness. They aren't permanents. And the more you're in contact with iron or use your natural glamour, it will weaken the charm. So she advises to <laughs> be cautious while using them, but, you know, being in the iron realm while wearing one of them won't cause them to die by merely breathing the air there. And Gremlkin is actually going in with them too. So they're trying to find the Iron King. They actually meet up with this rebel Iron Fang group the ones who are refusing to accept this false king and are trying to basically cause him a lot of mischief. And the leader of these people is Glitch, and he was a former lieutenant of the former king, Machina? Machina? Whatever his name was. And he basically wants to keep Megan safe, because the Iron King wants Megan. So they're like, yeah, we're not going to give you guys Megan, so we're going to protect her. But Megan's not going to be just hiding away while the Iron King destroys everything. So she actually manages to convince the rebels to actually do something and help the Summer and Winter Courts fight. And backtracking here, I thought it was really, really adorable how Ash became Megan's knight and... I just thought that was beyond adorable and cute, and it makes me so happy, and I couldn't help but grin like a fool while reading that part. So basically, Megan knows Ash's true name now, so he that shows a lot of trust between them, because now that she knows his true name, she can basically use it to command him to do whatever she wishes. So it's not something you reveal lightly. So, the Iron Fae rebels go to help Summer and Winter fight, Oberon and Mav aren't too happy about, you know, fighting side by side with some Iron Fae, but they realize that, yeah, they could really use all the help they could get, so fight now, figure things out later. So, Megan, Ash, and Pop manage to get into the Iron King's moving tower and find him, and surprise, surprise, it's Furum, I think it's pronounced, and he was the king before Machina, and... He's a little insane. He made Machina look like a nice guy. And basically he wants Megan because she has the power of the Iron King. The power of the Iron King can only be given away when the current king is on the verge of death. Otherwise, if it's not giving away, it's, it disappears until someone else worthy comes along. So, Megan killed Machina. So now, she, and he, I guess, gave the Iron the power of the Iron King to her. So she is basically the rightful person to the Iron Throne right now, and Furum wants to take that power from her, because the way he sees it, it is his. So realizing this, Megan actually lets him strike a killing blow. But before this, she comes to this epiphany that her iron and summer glamour can be combined together to form this whole new type of glamour. And once she does that, she lets Furum strike a killing blow and, as she's dying, gives the power of the Iron King to him. And being an Iron Fairy, Summer Glamour is poisonous to him, much like Iron is to a traditional Fae. So he basically is killed because of this. So she took down the Iron King, but now she is slowly dying as well. And she has one request of Ash to take her back to where it all began, to the Iron Court where she killed Machina. And Puck is like, no, don't do that. We, we can get you to a healer. We, we can save you. But Ash wants to obey his lady, and he does that. He takes her back, despite the fact that his amulet against iron sickness is destroyed, and he will die. If she dies, he will die. That's like the downside of becoming someone's knight. So, 
while they are in the Iron Court, Megan does the one thing that she can to save Ash, and that is to release him of his vow to her and to order him by his true name out of the Iron Court and never to return. And since he, she used his true name, Ash can't help but obey. But as he is forced to leave her, to die, he vows that he will find a way for them to be together. So, as she's dying, Megan tries to do one more thing. She basically uses what's left of this new glamour of hers to stop the spread of the Iron Kingdom. But she doesn't die. She is, like, tied to the Iron Court now. So, she saved the land, and the land basically saves her. And she is now the Iron Queen. So, we end the book with Megan going back to visit her family to let them know, yeah, I can't come back. I have a court to run. I have people I need to look after. I'll try and come back and visit, but I'm needed there. So, she has to leave her family... And we end, end the book with Ash watching her leave her family's house from afar. He can't approach her yet, but he is determined to find a way to be with her. He can't live in the Iron Court, even if she didn't order him never to return, because the Iron would kill him. So he's determined to find a way to survive in the Iron Court and to get around that vow. And Puck is actually with him, and is going to be going on this adventure with him based on how things ended. So, I'm really interested to see how that goes. And just, so many feels, guys. So many feels. I was actually getting teary as Megan was, like, in the Iron Court, slowly dying and ordering Ash away. I have to say, this might be either my favorite or my second favorite out of the series so far. And I can't wait to pick up the Iron Knight, because I want to see how things go with Ash and Puck. And I know it's going to be from Ash's point of view. And I think that's going to be really interesting. So, I love this. I love this series. It's definitely one of my top five favorite series so far. So, that's really it for this book view, and I hope to see you guys next time. Keep on reading, my fellow book addicts. Keep on reading.